This YouTube channel now has over 1000 subscribers. I'm Bernhard Werner and this is a small celebration and an even smaller Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed over the last 8 months. Creating videos is a lot of fun, but I'm not sure that I would continue doing it if people didn't like the result. So thanks for keeping me motivated. And I'm already working on the next video, but I'm quite busy with life, so it might take a while. To bridge the gap, I want to take this video here and answer the one question I'm asked regularly. How do I create my animations? Going into details would take a long time, but I would like to show you the basic software behind everything. Cinderella. It's a dynamic geometry software that was developed by my former PhD advisor, Jürgen Richter Gebert, and one of his former PhD students, Ulrich Kortenkamp. You can download it at cinderella.de, and if you open it, it looks like this. I will show you only a few of the absolute basics here. For more information, you should check out the documentation on the website. Let's place some points and connect them to a triangle. We can, for example, bisect the triangle sides and add the perpendiculars there. These intersect at a point which is the circumcenter of the triangle. So if we add a circle centered there that runs through one of the vertices, it runs through the others too. And as you can see, everything is dynamic and behaves nicely, even when going through the degenerate case where all three points are on a common line. If you press Ctrl I, you can open the inspector. It allows you to adjust the style of the various objects. One of many noteworthy features of Cinderella is that it works with a solid projective geometry system. For example, if you take two lines and look at their intersection, you can connect it to an additional point. We now add a grid and say that points should snap to it with the magnet button. With this, we can make the original lines perfectly parallel. They don't intersect anymore, but the resulting line is still there. In particular, it is parallel to the other two. That's because internally Cinderella works with homogeneous coordinates to allow points to sit infinitely far away. I'll link one of my videos down below if you want to see how exactly that works. Here in Cinderella you can even work with these infinitely far away points if you enable the spherical view. In this view, the whole drawing plane is compressed onto this hemisphere we see here. And the great circle, which is the border in this point of view here, is where all infinitely far away points live. Let me show you how to work with this. If we imagine for a moment that all points at infinity lie on this ordinary line, then all parallels to the given line must run through this point here. So all these lines would be parallel to the original one. If we now go to the spherical view, we can actually move the purple line to infinity and see that the lines that are supposed to be parallel become parallel. The last thing that I want to show you is that you can use a custom programming language called CindyScript to add your own functionality. This won't be a coding tutorial though, just a super short showcase for what you can do. In the code editor, you see various event folders. Scripts in the mouse down event, for example, get called every time you click somewhere with the mouse. The move event gets called whenever one of the geometric objects you placed change position. For now, I will stay in the draw event. These scripts are responsible for drawing something onto the screen. So let's do exactly that. Let's enable the grid again and the coordinate axis too and draw a point at 1 1. Whenever you change your code, you need to click the gears here for the changes to take effect. Voila! Let's draw a few more things. Maybe a line segment, a circle or a function plot. To finish off, let's try a sunflower around the origin. We draw, say, 1000 seeds. Every seed should be rotated and moved further out a bit more than the previous one. Let's start with the angle. The hash mark here is the CindyScript internal standard running index, i.e. in this loop here, this hash mark will be set to 1, then 2, then 3, onto 1000. 
Then we draw the points, zoom out and see our sunflower. Now, the points are not nicely distributed. We can fix that by adding a square root to the radius here. This makes the points move outward faster at the start and slower at the end, in just the right way. We can also add a little color, maybe a growing red channel, a random green channel and a shrinking blue channel. There you go. Perhaps not the most realistic sunflower, but pretty. If you are satisfied with whatever you created in Cinderella and you want to share it with someone who doesn't have the software, you can export your project to HTML. It now runs self-contained in a website. If we take a look at the source code of the website, we can see a lot of boilerplate code, but here in the middle is also our little piece we just wrote. You could continue to write Cindy's script here and it would just work as if you wrote it in Cinderella directly. If we look at the top here, we see that the website loads something called CindyJS from CindyJS.org. Let's go there for a moment. CindyJS is half a successor and half a sister project of Cinderella that provides the same functionality for browser applications. At the moment of recording this video, it doesn't have a GUI yet, so you need to export your geometry from Cinderella or you need to rely solely on CindyScript. Here in the gallery, you can get a nice glimpse into what's possible with CindyJS. We have another sunflower at the very top. Next to it is a visualization of linear regression. We have platonic solids in 3D. and fractals. And this is where we come back to the question of how I create the animations for my videos. I use CindyJS. I've been using it for 8 years now, almost daily for my job, to build interactive visualizations. To help with the animations for the channel, I also created an obscenely large CindyScript library. If you are really interested in it, you can find it on GitHub if you like, but I won't link to it here because it's a bit of a mess. To finish this video off, here are a few examples of what else is possible in CindyJS. A visualization of binary tree search, a predator-prey simulation, Interactive atomic orbitals or a pizza cutting exercise for 6th graders to learn about fractions. If you are interested in learning more about Cinderella and to see a proper tutorial, please let me know in the comments. I might do one every now and then if there is enough interest. Thanks again to everyone who subscribed to my channel so far and I will see you in the next video.